Without cannabis, I definitely would not be able to, I honestly would be dead. I think I wouldn't have been able to, I would almost starve to death with Crohn's disease. I would have definitely not been able to find an appetite or be able to eat and sustain life. That, I wouldn't, my life wouldn't look <laughs> at like anything. Welcome to the Well with Cannabis podcast, a show dedicated to telling the life-changing stories of those who live well with cannabis, all while teaching you how to do the same. Meet your host, Emily Kyle, a registered dietitian nutritionist turned certified holistic cannabis practitioner. Emily changed her life for the better with the help of the cannabis plant, and now she is committed to helping others do the same. Tune in each week to hear heartwarming stories and gain the knowledge you need to feel connected, inspired, and supported on your own cannabis journey. Whether you're a new cannabis consumer or a lifetime lover, you'll benefit from these uplifting tales of real-life journeys that will show you how you, too, can live your best life well with cannabis. Before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to share a note on potentially sensitive content. The episodes on the Well With Cannabis podcast are created for adult audiences only. We will at time cover sensitive topics, including but not limited to suicide, abuse, mental illness, sex, drugs, alcohol, psychedelics, and the obvious use of plant medicine. Explicit language may be used occasionally. Please refrain from watching or listening to the show if you're likely to be offended or adversely impacted by any of these topics. The information on this show is for informational and educational purposes only. It does not constitute medical advice. If any of the content on this podcast has brought up anything for you, please reach out or speak to a professional or someone you trust. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Well With Cannabis podcast. And I am so excited to be here with a semi-local new friend. I have Miss Angelina Rose here with me today. And thank you so much for joining me. I am super excited. Thank you so much for having me. Likewise. So I want to talk, we have lots of things to talk about today. So we're going to talk a little bit about chronic illness and Crohn's disease and how that's kind of led you to where you're at today. I want to talk about your podcast, the Chronically Ill podcast. And then I want to talk about everything you're doing now, Green Godmother Herbal Wellness. I want to talk about herbalism, crystal healing, all of the good stuff. So let's start kind of the beginning, chronic, chronic illness, Crohn's disease. How does this start for you? Uh it's but it that started so long ago that sometimes I forget exactly how it started. And it 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 started with my eyes, believe it or not. I was uh experiencing kind of what felt like, you know, when you look at the sun and you get that glare feeling, and then it just got exacerbated to the point where what was going on? And I went to the eye doctor, of course, and it then turned into quickly going to a gastroenterologist and having my first of many colonoscopies, which unless you have an IBD or have had to, you don't necessarily need to have those until you're of a certain age. So I, that was not exciting. Um, and it just led me on a path probably for, I guess, since 2008 now of um intensive bowel disease adventures uh, mm -hmm. when you first were diagnosed how were your doctors and your treatment team were they supportive and, and i'm sure was cannabis probably not in the picture at this point how old were you i was in my late 20s i was i think i had just turned 28 mm -hmm. and you know, I I was always pretty honest that I was a cannabis user as far as, you know, you know smoking cannabis and partaking. Um, <clears throat> but yes, obviously here in New York, it wasn't something that we really could mention or perhaps really have your doctor mention more so, you know, or have it be comfortable to broach with your doctor. So, but I felt like I had known enough about bowel diseases because what strange this is probably the weirdest thing ever but so many years ago because i've always been a cannabis you know user and just in that world of like you know stoner you know pop culture kind of stuff i remember there was i think it was like a high times video from it was one of those like yeah. 
you know, educational or whatever. They were interviewing people about cannabis. And I remember there was a girl in the video and she had said that she had Crohn's disease. And this is this. I was in my 20s, like early 20s, like probably 18, 19, 20, 21 when, when I was watching this. And I remember her saying, you know, it feels like I've eaten glass and I've digested glass. And if I didn't smoke cannabis and she like take a took a big it, you know, so I was like, wow, all right. Uh, that's my kind of girl. Uh, you know, she's like, I wouldn't be able to eat. I wouldn't be able to survive. I would starve to death. And I just remember like, of course, you know, when you're young, you're like, wow, that'd be kind of crazy to just like have what, how weird would it be to like have an illness where you like have to smoke weed, you know, like, so in your brain, you think crazy things, but then of like, of course, maybe that was some weird mind manifesting. Um, right. And then fast forward years later, I was like, wow. Okay. I remember that video, with that girl. So I guess it's, you know, just not enough, you know? And so that is actually where my healing journey with cannabis began. Cause I realized what the doctors weren't able to do for me when you're saying what were, how supportive of that were they, they were, you know, on their own path of what they want to suggest in the Western medical world, which is maybe not the best for everybody with IBDs. Some of the treatments that they wanted to recommend are probably great and worth trying out for some other inflammatory diseases, but maybe not Crohn's, maybe not ulcerative colitis. To me, after reading about them and learning, because I was like, I want to know, these are some scary things they're suggesting, you know, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So that is sort of where I did listen to what they were doing. I went through their protocols as much as I could, but I was always making sure that I was trying to find herbal ways, cannabis, different ways for cannabis, which came later. Now let's talk about your healing journey. You said you've always used cannabis. At this point, do you make a transition from recreational use to medical use? How does that unfold for you and how does it ultimately help you feel better? It's kind of crazy because you think, okay, well, let me just smoke more or whatever. You know, I don't know. At the time in New York, it was still such a very, even in the medical um, cannabis uh, program, the information was vague. <clears throat> the availability of products was even just, I don't even think at that time there would have been many that were perhaps even useful to me. So I didn't, you know, and I honestly, it was and it is still cost prohibitive um, here in New York as a medical patient. Also, I had to stop working full time at that time. So it became even more cost prohibitive. So um, my healing journey actually began with, you know, you think it's my guts. So you want to go with your diet and then, you know, all kinds of supplements supplements and different kinds of uh, things you see on TV and all that. I definitely have tried every single diet, every single way of eating or or not eating for that matter, Um, herbs, supplements. And then I decided after so many years, I just wanted to like really solidify my knowledge for the things I was doing. Because at that point, I was my own guinea pig after probably like seven years of that. And then I started to realize it wasn't always, it wasn't that, it was this plus cannabis and also not just smoking. It was now we have more availability in New York for CBD products. Those became available. So then I explored those tinctures obviously were like the easiest first mm-hmm. thing, before, even before gummies. And then that you even see on like the news. So you order like the cheap one first and you're figuring yeah. it out along the way. I mean, of course, in my mind, I'm like, let me, I, of course I can make my own butter or whatever. But when you're ill and disabled and you're going through a lot of chronic illness issues, it's, it's hard to find a wherewithal to do a lot and add a lot more to your plate than what you're already dealing with medically. 
Absolutely. Now, how does your relationship today with cannabis look like? And what does your health look like? How are you feeling? So my relationship with cannabis today is that I'm very thankful for the knowledge that I have, but I also have to remind myself of it pretty much daily because it is something where I have chosen to utilize the cannabis products available to me in different ways, not just smoking. It's all ingesting. That was what was the most important thing for me was, you know, let me find a different way. Let me put it in my, let me drink it, put it in my guts. Let me put it up the other side, you know, anywhere it can go on my skin, you know, like, and so it wasn't until I started exploring all of the different ways and what that meant and also learning about it that really made me able to cope on a daily, like, let's say it changed my daily life. My lifestyle was able to not just be getting up and taking a couple tokes and then maybe even just taking a couple sips, taking my probiotics and my vitamins and then not really getting through my day because smoking is great, but it's not enough. When you have illness and inflammatory issues, it's helpful to add some more cannabinoids is what I've learned. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's talk about your chronically ill podcast. I would love to talk especially for our listeners here, I have a feeling there are a lot of people listening with chronic illness, whether it is IBD related or not, who feel alone. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about your podcast and what it's all about for people who are listening. It's kind of funny because it's 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 not unlike this where we're having a casual conversation and just kind of getting to know each other on that level of how we are relating to cannabis and wellness. But it was so specifically brought from during the pandemic, obviously everyone was so isolated, but I would have a like a friend where we would have like these daily chats and we both had these extreme medical situations, almost like these crazy just stories and adventures of our doctor's appointments and dealing with things during the pandemic as someone who's already chronically ill and dealing with some of the things that people were just kind of putting on their plate. You're like, these things have been on my plate. So, you know, it was almost like a little bit of a gripe combo kind of thing that we would be doing every day kind of during our wake and bake and I was like this is so specific like we're waking and baking and we are just like kind of you know griping and you know watching about you know what's going on in our health and you know we would talk about like oh well what are you doing did you try it have you tried this or that and then you know it got to like oh these you know that these gummies or this or these products are really great so it i kind of just started to want to know that about more of like my friends, like, you know, you can bet because my friends would, they knew that I had a chronic illness. So that's also where people would come to me because I would post about it. I mean, at a certain point, you just have to let it out because you're living it. And then you realize there's so many other people that do relate, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have a feeling your listeners just feel whether regardless of the source of their chronic pain, just feel like that sense of camaraderie and that sense of support. And I feel like that's so important for our community. And do you find that a lot of people chronic pain, regardless of the source, are opting for cannabis and looking towards cannabis at this time? Or is this still kind of new for people? I think that there are people that use cannabis, have a chronic illness, and maybe don't even realize that it's helping them sort of stabilize and sustain. So they want to talk about both. And then maybe at the end of the conversation, they're like, wow, okay, I didn't even realize cannabis was helping me really through this as much. Or they, or I like to talk to people that are even within some of the other sides of of uh, the cannabis side of it where they themselves are in maybe a medical world or they have been certifying or teaching other people like you about how to, you know, 
medicate and be well with cannabis and herbs and all the knowledge that you can utilize with that. And that excites me too, because that shows that we all sort of have this path where we're, you know, we want to be better for ourselves and we want to learn and then we want to share it. And I love that. Like that to me is what really wants me, makes me want to keep making more episodes of it. And, you know, meeting more different kinds of people because it is and that's the other thing too is i get to kind of have people on the all ends of the spectrum of what it means to medicate with cannabis for a chronically ill lifestyle it's it's as a patient it's maybe also as a caregiver as a as a medical professional even because i've had some great guests and connections and networked with people through what i was doing there that are on all sides of it, which is kind of exciting. So nice. And I find so many people just like me and you, like regular people, we're just regular people, but we found this wellness through this plant. And now we just have to share it with people. We want other people to feel the same relief that we have felt. And so that brings us up to our next topic and what you are doing. I want to talk about Green Godmother Herbal Wellness. Can you give us a little bit of insight on your business and what you're currently doing? Well, I really am just starting it. I had created the idea and what I was doing for Green Godmother after being a medical patient and having to find products for cannabis and herb, herbal wellness and all these supplements and vitamins and all that stuff, so all the different diets I've tried. Um I realized that, you know, if I was able to just sort of share it all with people in a creative way that I can see that they responded to the certain different topics, you know what I mean? But I wanted to be able to, you know, explore it in my own way. So it kind of, no pun intended, happened organically because I was a patient. I ended up helping people just through what I was finding that worked for me. I would share it with like my friends and my family. And then I I would start to learn more about all all these different products, the topicals, the, you know, all the different kinds of gummies and all the different cannabinoids added and the CBD, the, you know, the THC blends, all these different things. So then people would just ask me about this stuff, much like they would ask me about my IBD and chronic illness and diet things. So I was like, you know, I should just sort of organize this a little bit. And so I started organizing it and I came up with, you know, Green Godmother herbal wellness and mindful wholeness because I am also a creative person. I'm inspired by the things around me, but it was also created by my friends and their responses to me. Like even still daily, I add things where I'm like, it feels like too much, but people request it from me because they're like, they know that this is what I'm about. So it's not weird to them, you know, and I like that thing where it's like, if I'm too much, go find less. So, you know, if green godmother is too much, then, you know, it's okay. There's so many choices for everyone out there, which is great. But um, I've incorporated cannabis crystals and my love of creativity and cats and crafts, basically, and all of it. And it, like I said, it happened organically. I didn't even mean it. It was really just me sharing my knowledge. That's amazing. I'm so excited for you. I feel like being in the cannabis space right now is really exciting because there's just unlimited potential. And when you really get to help somebody feel better, like there's just no feeling like it. So for anybody listening, I will put links to your business so people can find you and learn more about what you're doing. I do ask all my guests the same four questions. Are you ready for them? I think so. Yes. Uh, (laughs) The first one, what are you most proud of to date? Oh, you know, I, someone had recently said to me, you should be really proud of yourself for how far you've come. And it's making me, I'm still not even able to say that out loud without getting emotional because it's something you really do have to think about when there's been so many times in my life and my chronic illness in the past since 2008, I suppose, um, 
where I would, I, I remember I would say, you know, I have been so horizontal, I've been horizontal for so many hours of my life where I wasn't able to do things. So I'm proud that I'm able to use the knowledge that I have, you know, and also have been able to sustain this this far without, um, I don't know, kind of like giving up, but also giving in really, because like I said, I, I had to take my own journey to maybe not necessarily what, and I will say at the time, the medical community could provide me. Let's hope that in the future, you know, we can provide something more well-rounded for people in my situation. Absolutely. Now, this is everybody's least favorite question. What do you <laughs> think your life would look like without cannabis? Boy. Well, like without cannabis forever, I would be a totally different person because it's totally part of my personality to the point where people who have known me since I was a teenager are the, the fact that I am green godmother now cannabis concierge and creative, you know, they're like, of course you are, Angelina, <laughs> like, duh, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not strange to them in any which way or form. Um, but without cannabis in my current or adult life, I definitely would not be able to, I honestly would be dead. I think I wouldn't have been able to, I almost starved to death with Crohn's disease. And I know for a fact that if I wasn't able to find different methods of cannabis that were not readily available to me, I would have definitely not been able to find an appetite or be able to eat and sustain life that I wouldn't, my life wouldn't look <laughs> at like anything. Oh, it's, I'm so happy you found cannabis. Now you said you've used cannabis for your whole life. So I don't know how applicable this question will be. But if you could <laughs> go back 10, 20, 30 years ago and give yourself a piece of cannabis advice, what would it be? Uh, it would be like 10, 20 years ago. Like, you know, definitely keep trying to find more you know i i obviously back then in new york it was even to us watching these high times videos you're like wow what is this crazy world you know yeah. we don't live in that world they're eating brownies you know and to me in my mind i was like i know that that world exists somewhere so i think that that's kind of what I would tell myself. I would say, don't worry, that world does exist. It will. <laughs> yeah. it's, which is exciting too, because I mean, we've really come a long way in the last 10 years. A very last question. If you could be remembered for just one thing in the cannabis space, what would it be? Um, I think for being inspiring creatively and to have people know that they have the ability to be as much and as like well as they want to be because i mean i don't know how to even explain it but i love what i call creative empowerment with people that's what i would love to be remembered for is that people were saying yes because I knew her because she told me this because she helped me with this cannabis I was able to do this or that and and that is kind of where I got the name great godmother from because I have been told previously in my previous work with artists and models and creative people or just in general, I would do readings with like crystals and astrology and stuff like that. And people would just come back to me and be like, wow, you know, you, I honestly have had people say you've, you've helped me make my dreams come true. You're like my fairy godmother. <laughs> oh my gosh, that has to be amazing. I have always been kind of called the, a fairy godmother in, in a different way as well through yeah. some of the like, you know, LGBTQIA community as well. So it kind of has like, it's got like five different meanings Beautiful. now. Yeah. 
I love it. And you are the green godmother. It is amazing. And look at you. You just like, you're so vibrant. You look like you're feeling so well. I hope you're feeling so well. And thank you so much for coming here, sharing your experience and hopefully giving a glimmer of hope to anybody who's listening, who is dealing with chronic illness and maybe hasn't tried cannabis or, or maybe is ready to explore it and, and can feel a little bit more confident with your wisdom. So thank you so much for sharing with us today. You're so welcome. Thank you again so much for having me and listening to me. And I, you know, really appreciate what you're doing as well. And I've followed you for so long that it's just such an honor to be able to share this space and this conversation with you because I've learned so much from you and I share your page with so many people. So it's kind of like the first page I share to people. So I'm just so glad to share it with you. Oh, thank you for telling me that feels so full circle. And now I can't wait for this to go out and just inspire and help more people. And thank you for sharing that with me. It's really special. You're welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. You finished another episode of the Well with Cannabis podcast and are one step closer to discovering how you too can live well with cannabis. Thank you for listening in today. We hope this episode has been a helpful and informative one. Please visit emilykylenutrition.com for more information on today's show, show notes, guest information, recipes, and other resources. If you want more support and encouragement on your cannabis journey, please consider joining the private Well With Cannabis community. In this group, you can connect with like-minded individuals focused on improving their health and wellness through cannabis. Join the group today to continue your journey of wellness together at emilykylenutrition.com.